Now that we understand how electricity is delivered to our homes, we take a look at how power is harnessed safely and how the industry keeps up with the rising demand for power in the digital world. A transmission tower melts in the heat of fire, almost collapsing on one of the busiest highways in Metro Manila, Eslex in Alabang. Aerial footage shows cars stopping and fleeing in fear. Luckily, no one died. On that day in April, men at the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines control room were hard at work, ensuring that hundreds of thousands of families and businesses would not experience a major power brownout. When such incidents happen, the company has to make sure the perfect balance between supply and demand of electricity is maintained. Okay, so this is the control center. center. This is the brain of the NGCP. How crucial is the work you're doing here? Well, it is crucial. No? Kasi, uh, aside from the main role natin, uh, to balance the generation and as well as the demand, we're also facing some challenges also. No? Recently, what has happened in Alabang, the, the Tower 34. Kung mapapansin nyo or kung napanood nyo sa TV, yung tower down doon. Very, very uh, significant sa atin yun. Kasi it can interrupt or it can paralyze also no, the continuous power flow dito sa Metro Manila. So what we did is we reroute the power. We see to it that, syempre, ayaw nating ma-fill din ng mga consumers natin yun. To hit the balance, the system frequency has to stay at around 60 Hz. That's what's needed to feed current into our homes for our appliances to work. If it is much below or above that number, circuits could fry and appliances could break down. The NGCP has to hit that balance by managing the electricity from various power plants around the country and how much of it is passed on to the grid. Consumers can help keep that balance by reducing demand during the peak hours. This is what rush hour looks like for the engineers here at the NGCP. Why? Because it's almost 2 p.m. It's the hottest hours of the day and this is when they have to ask electricity generators to increase their supply to meet the increased demand of people all using a lot of air conditioning all at the same time. We have to remember that we can help manage the supply and demand and save money by using appliances at the right time when it costs less, like ironing your clothes and using washing machines and dryers between 9 p.m. and 9 a.m. or setting your aircon to a minimum of 23 degrees. Saving energy means not just saving money and reducing our energy demand, but it also means doing our part for the environment. Isabella Montano, CNN Philippines. Keeping up with the high demand also means building more transmission towers and improving existing facilities in the next few years. However, there are several factors that are hindering this progress. In April, a fire broke out in an area beside a transmission tower occupied by informal settlers in Alabang, Muntinlupa City. The situation weakened the foundation of the power facility and caused it to lean over a portion of the South Luzon Expressway. The said tower is part of the Binyan Muntinlupa 230 kilovolt transmission line. These towers support lines that transmit high voltage power over long distances from power plants to communities. The NGCP says the lines carry a minimum of 69,000 volts. Yung lumalabas sa mga outlet natin, that's only 220 volts. Imagine what will happen to the human body. We can go as high as 500,000 volts. Christopher Serse knows well the dangers these transmission lines pose. He has burn marks over half of his body from injuries after an electrical wire connected to a transmission tower exploded in 2013 in Ambuklao, Barangay Baisa in Quezon City. Inakit po namin. So yung isa kong kasama na ano, maliit pa, pinalo niya po yan eh. Tapos? Bigla pong sumabog. Ay, nagkaganda na po ako. But the accident did not discourage the Cerse family from staying here in Ambuklao, a few meters from the transmission tower of the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines, or NGCP. We don't have any other people here. Yes, yes. 
eh, ano lang naman. Kasi mag-iingat na lang. Here in Baisa, Novaliches, there are four 230 kilovolt transmission towers. The NGCP says they are given a 40-meter right-of-way clearance around the tower based on their contract with the government. The NGCP only operates and manages transmission facilities, but these facilities, including the land where they are standing, are still owned by the government. On Mendez Street, there are obvious right-of-way violations and residents admit they are squatting in the area. We will try to check on some of the houses that are built around, literally around the transmission towers. As you can see, there's virtually uh, like a small community built around the base of the tower. Just on this second floor, I'm counting around five rooms. There are two Sari Sari stores just within this area on the base of the tower. A resident even has a small backyard poultry farm. A new house is under construction. On rooftops, Meralco power cables serve as clothesline. Pinag-iingatan namin na mangyari, hindi dapat mangyari. Oo nga, oo. Pero tingin po, safe naman kayo dito. Okay naman. Sabi may kuryente daw yung tower. Wala naman, di na kuryente na sana kami. Two towers were constructed in 1961, the other two in 1994. When the NGCP began operating the government-owned transmission lines in 2009, it also inherited the informal settlers and obstructions that were added through the years, such as fully grown trees and poles. The Quezon City government has agreed to clear the area and find a relocation site for the estimated 15,000 informal settlers in Barangay Baisa. Those not availing of relocation will be given a one-time financial assistance of 30,000 pesos. Ang amin usapan ho ng uh, National Grid. Pag naklear na ho namin, we will turn it over to them at sila na ho magbabantay. The NGCP is hoping to come up with similar agreements with other local governments. We are willing to uh, help. But then it really depends on the LG because we're a private company and we have no authority to go in and forcibly evict them. Aside from informal settlers and obstructions, the NGCP has to deal with uncooperative landowners hosting NGCP towers and other facilities. Some even reportedly charge rental fees from NGCP for temporary right-of-way easement. The NGCP filed court cases against several landowners who violate right-of-way clearances. The NGCP is considering a long-term solution, criminalizing construction of homes, planting of trees, and putting up other obstruction near transmission lines under the Anti-Power Line Disturbance Bill. The NGCP says obstructions near transmission lines may cause contact to and tripping of lines leading to blackouts. While NGCP commits to modernizing the power transmission network, it hopes residents and local officials would respect the company's right of way to make sure electricity is delivered to almost all of the country and that communities are kept safe. Ruth Cabal, CNN Philippines.